All right, we're live. This is great. You know, I'm here with, I'm here with a celebrity, really. Uh, you know, <laughs> someone I watch on Twitch, a, really, what I call a video game expert. So, um, just to introduce myself, I'm Imfan Akpan, professor at uh, Methodist University. And um, I, I'm privileged to have Matt here. If you could you just tell, tell a little bit about yourself. All right. Well, my name is Matthew Prentice. I am a streamer on YouTube and Twitch. My username is Matt Hadouken. And I've been streaming for about two years now, which I can't believe it's been that long. But two years, I've had my live stream and I just interact with my chat over on Twitch.tv. And I don't consider myself a pro gamer, but I do like the game. I do like art and I am very interested in the digital and technological realm that we are entering. And I have a lot to say about it. So I can't wait. Well, that's good. I do have one question. Where did the, is it Hadouken? Where, where did that come from? <laughs> well, when I was coming up with the username for my streaming and YouTube, I wanted to have a little bit of my name in there, so I picked a Matt, but I also wanted it to end with something cool because I didn't just want to be Matthew Prentice online. I want to be something that had a punch. So I was just going through all my video game references, and I was thinking, what's something that has, like, fire? Because I wanted it to be, like, a fire-themed community. I didn't want to be Matt Flame. I did think about Matt Flame for a while, but I was like, no, there's got to be something a little more gaming reference -y. And I came up on Hadouken, and I was like, "That's kind of that's kind of a fireball." It's from Street Fighter. It's the move uh, where he goes like this Hadouken, and then it shoots like a a blast out of his hands. And so I was like, "Okay, I kind of like that. It sounds like a it's, it, it fit together in my head." Matt Hadouken, it felt smooth, and I was like, "All right, I'll just run with it. If I need to change it, I'll change it later." But I haven't changed it since, so it's working. That's good. That's good. And and just to give some background, you started on Twitch or how, how did how did you get on a Twitch? So before I was streaming video games, I was just looking for some way to get into the content creation realm because I've seen a couple of my friends do it and some were successful, some were not. But ever since I was a kid, I was always watch these YouTubers play games and interact with their fans and i was like i feel like i'm a i'm a charismatic person i could easily do that and so for my first go around at this content creation stuff i decided i wanted to be a youtube animator because in my head i thought youtube animation was easy and then after i'd say six months of attempting to make animations on youtube i realized i was a little out of my league because animation is not easy it is actually very hard and a lot of time being spent into drawings. <laughs> but me as an artist, I thought it would be a breeze. I was wrong. But video games were something that I just, I tend to gravitate towards ever since I was a kid. And so I was like, I'll give it a shot. I worked one summer in 2019. I worked at a lime plant, just carrying buckets of lime and processing them, saving up money to buy a gaming PC that was good enough to stream and play games at the same time. And when I finally earned enough money to buy one, I immediately, I set up I set up shop. I was living inside my Aunt Lizzie's uh, house at the time. And I started making reaction videos on YouTube. And that was doing all right. I was actually seeing pretty good numbers on those videos. However, yeah. reacting to copyrighted content on YouTube is tricky and I, didn't feel like having to dispute all these copyright claims on their website. So I trashed that idea. I recycled that channel and I turned it into Matt Hadouken. And so at the time I started my streaming career, I was already moved out from Aunt Lizzie's place. I was here at my apartment in Corpus Christi. And I, you know, a lot of people ask, when do you start streaming? What's the best time? It's not really a best time. You just start. You just start and it's kind of like building a boat while you're already out in sea. I was out there trying to navigate the Twitch landscape as I was streaming. And it's hard because Twitch doesn't have a very good 
recommendation system. They don't really show new creators to people who've already been to their website. So whenever you do have somebody who comes to your chat, you only have a small window of opportunity to turn them into a fan and to ensure that they come and stick around. And I got lucky, honestly, because the first couple of times I streamed, it was to zero viewers, but I had to keep my energy high because I knew if I did it, then nobody was going to you know, pay attention to me. And then mm-hmm. eventually one person came and they brought their friends and then their friends told their friends. And I've seen many of my audience members come and go over the two years I've been streaming. But right now I have a pretty solid, you know, group of uh, audience members that, you know, will tune in every time. So it's been it's been a struggle, but I loved it every bit of the way. Wow, that that's great. That's inspirational because you know, you, you stuck to it. So you try, you try different things, you know, you, you, you got in there. One thing, the reaction videos, they didn't work. Okay. You said, let me try something else. I'm going to keep at this until I find something that, that works. And even, and I, I think that's interesting because you mentioned with the Twitch, you were on there with zero, uh, <laughs> zero viewers, but you kept at it. And eventually you you built up that following. So that that is great. That's a good thing. So we, speaking of Twitch, and I've watched many of them. I don't know what the video games are. So what do you have a specific game that you is it? Because I know some people stream Fortnite and, and things. Is there something in particular or do you just randomly pick different games or, or how does that work? So yeah, for yeah. many people who stream on Twitch, they have their niche audience that likes to watch them for one specific game. If they stray away from that game, then maybe their audience will dip a little bit. However, it's interesting because when building a community, personally for me, I hope to get them to fall in love with me as the creator and not the game I play. I could you know, spend time grinding a specific first person shooter i could play call of duty fortnite halo and i could get the audience that loves that game and they watch me because i'm good at it but i'm right now i'm going the longer route which is honestly harder but i'm trying to i'm a variety streamer so i play multiple different games from first person shooters like halo or fortnite to io games which are browser games that the audience can hop in and play along with me and so recently I pivoted from becoming a specifically Twitch only streamer to doing Twitch and TikTok because TikTok right now has a very high rate of discoverability. So if I can grow my audience on a different platform and they think I'm funny, not because they tune into the streams and watch the games, but because they think my content is hilarious, then they'll show up to the streams and they'll watch me just be myself. And I think personally as a content creator, that's the, best route even though it's the hardest it's the best to build yourself a solid fan base in my opinion so so really what i think what they call that is a funnel so you're you're built building up different uh areas and uh wow so that that's good so that's interesting so really what i wanted you know to get in here and to to talk about is the metaverse that that's really something you know i've I've been on this channel and the really the primary thing on this channel is i would make videos for my students and i may and then i would do a theme what they call the theme of the week and i would talk about something in the news or or something and i did a video on nfts making money you know music with nfts and then i got contacted by a uh i, I guess you call it youtuber uh okay. a, a, a underdog crypto so i i got uh he watched the video saw the thing and thought it was good and then got into to uh really working with him and some really smart uh, gentlemen in that crypto space who have their own uh, YouTube channels with crypto. And then we started doing these live streams. And that really pushed me to think about this in a different way. Okay, this is beyond the, the students. 
And what was interesting is after I started making the videos and the NFTs and the things like that, more students were like, Hey, I was watching your video. You were talking about the, you know, this, uh, and I'm like, wait a minute, you were watching the other video, you know? So I, I think, I think there's something said to it, to, to, to putting yourself out there and to being there. And that's why I wanted your expertise because I've been riding this NFT wave. So I, you know, I've been getting a lot of uh, engagement, mainly for, I do it for the students. We get a lot of feedback from the students, NFTs, crypto, things of that nature, tying it to accounting, my specialty. But I, I've been drilling into the metaverse and looking at it and you're, you, you're a streamer, gamer, you're an expert in that area. So I wanted to get your expert take on where do you see this going? You know, where do you see video games? Where do you see all of this going? All right. Well, all right. ever since I tried on my first virtual reality headset, I automatically knew that this was going to become something way bigger down the line. For when I first put it on, it was just a simple like a rhythm game. I was playing Beat Saber. I was in VR chat, but when I really thought about it and where, what technology we had back when I was a kid and where we are now, I saw virtual reality as just a whole door to another, just another universe, a metaverse, as you will. The, and then to introduce things such as non-fungible tokens or NFTs and crypto, it, it's, it's becoming a lot more clear to me that we're going to a direction where you will have two two realities you live in the real one which we are talking through right now and the digital one which people might want to escape to in the future when i went into virtual reality for my first time i knew i had to buy myself a headset and i did for some time and then i ended up selling it because i wanted to get a newer one in the future but i i could just see a vision of a future where you have a virtual community that you walk into. You're walking down the virtual street. You see a clothing shop for it, like in real life, where you'd have your own clothes that you purchase to wear on yourself. You'd have clothes to purchase to wear on your avatar. These are run by real businesses that do their real designs and they sell it for your real virtual body. And when talks about NFTs came into my attention, I just thought, you know, NFT to somebody who operates in the physical world might seem ridiculous because they're like, okay, well, you can just screenshot a picture. If somebody makes a picture, you know, you could just copy and paste. But in a digital landscape where there is no copy and paste button, if you purchase an NFT that was designed by an original artist and now you have your NFT in your uh, in your digital house, that is original artwork from an actual artist in your digital house that you own and that's where the value lies that's like buying an actual painting in real life and keeping it in your house because that's an original work i see nfts translating in that sort of way and i i, I just don't see an end to where we're going right now cryptocurrency might all might as well be the currency of the virtual world that we will be in in the future I know that Facebook, I heard about talks of them wanting to create their own currency that might be used in their Oculus headsets. I'm still unaware of, you know, what their advances are on that. But that's everything I've heard regarding the digital world intersecting with the real world. And those are kind of my predictions of what I see the future holding. I don't know if you've heard anything similar to that or something way different from that, but that's just what I speculate no, that that's good. I, I mean, there's so many different takes on it. So I I try to tend to lean to the practical and tactical. So I've bought an NFT. So I bought a, a and, and and don't laugh. I bought a rabbit. It's a digit. It's a little rabbit. An ice rabbit is what it's called from the sandbox. Okay. Because I wanted to find out. Okay, how does it work? 
you know, people are talking about it. They're talking about this metaverse, the sandbox, uh, there's Decentraland. So I bought, I bought this, I bought a rabbit, it's $15. Had to pay the gas fees. I had to pay, you know, these fees to get it. Uh, so it, it all total was about $50 for a $15 rabbit, but I got it. And I was excited about it. I had a rabbit. I can, it's in my, it's on my phone. I can look at it. Uh, I, and I remember going to class and, you know, these are all undergraduate students and telling my students, Hey, I bought an NFT. Okay. What did you buy? I said, I bought a rabbit here that you want to see it. And they're like, okay, well, why did you buy the rabbit? What can you do with the rabbit? So, and, and I went to each one of my classes and I got the same reaction, like, well, what are you, you know, what are you going to do with this rabbit? You know, so do you think that we're in a space where, because if you go on TikTok, you go on the internet, you hear people talking about NFTs, NFTs, and you, you hear all this news and people buying and millions of dollars. But when you talk to the you know, regular person, they're like, what is it? I don't get it. So do you think either things are just moving so fast or is it just going to take a long time for things to just kind of connect? At the rate uh, technology is moving, uh, I think it's definitely ahead of its time currently. And that's why a lot of people don't understand it. They haven't had time to explore similar to whenever you know new websites come out people are mostly like i remember when tiktok first came out a lot of people gave it gave it a lot of trouble because they were like what's the point of this this is like musically which was an app before tiktok where you basically lip sync music a lot of people were hating on it and then next thing you know in a couple of months everybody's on tiktok wanting to make content wanting to yeah. watch people so I feel like we've seen it before. It's like being early to a stock that many people don't know about. And then when it booms, everybody wants one. Everybody needs one. Everybody and their mama has an NFT. And that's I that's what I feel right now. I personally don't have an NFT to my name. I want to buy one, but I haven't gone around to looking and do my research on NFTs. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's what I think right now. Right now, everybody's just in that weird transition phase where there's a group of people that think it's like the new gold rush, and there's a group of people who are just questioning what's the hype. Well, let me ask you this, and and I read something there. Do you think the meta? So if you go to, to so the the sandbox and uh, decentral land, a lot of people compare it to Fortnite. And you said something that was really good earlier that um, people may have the real world that we're in and then the virtual world. And I was reading that even today, people play Fortnite, but they don't play Fortnite. So I said, wait a minute, wait, what do you mean? And, you know, I'm reading this and they're like, they play Fortnite, but they don't. They're on Fortnite because you can talk to different people. And it's, there's a social aspect to it. You can meet people. So people will hang out in the game, which is a virtual world, and talk to people and not necessarily play, but be in there. So do you think, is that what you mean by this separate world or, you know, that you have, you're connected to? Yeah, basically, I see that in many games now, like even Minecraft. Minecraft's a survival game, but there are different servers you can go to to not survive. You basically just interact with your friends, interact, play games together, or just hang out with each other. And Fortnite, I mean, I relate NFTs to the metaverse as like Fortnite is to skins. People buy the skins in Fortnite. They know they can't take it out of the game with them. All they can do is play with it on. And then when they turn off their Xbox or their PlayStation, the skin's gone. But they still buy it. They still find some sort of value in it. So obviously, it's not that foreign of a concept when you really think about it. And I, so what I see for a metaverse type reality is, you know, you can go places, you can buy these things, you can hang out with your friends and socialize. But instead of you having to switch a certain program 
like you want to play Fortnite with somebody okay now you want to play minecraft you got to switch the application in a metaverse i see somebody oh if i want to go do something else i can literally travel through this metaverse world to go to that place instead of having to switch an application because it'll be all in the in one metaverse that's that's how i see it happening in the future and it's funny how you bring up the games like that i completely forgot that video games have been doing this already in, in implementing a social platform into a game that has nothing to do with just socializing it's supposed to be a first person shooter or a third person shooter so yeah i think i think that's exactly it that's very interesting that <laughs> i completely forgot about that and they have the concerts. they have the concerts in fortnite as well like, yeah travis scott exactly that's that has nothing to do with shooting that's nothing to do with building <laughs> But people are watching <laughs> musical performances in a video game about a battle royale. That's amazing yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, let, let me ask you this. So how do you see you said you're a streamer. You didn't say you didn't say your content, uh, you know, what do what they call it? The content creator, you said, or influencer, you said streamer. How will this shift or emergence i guess of the metaverse how is that going to impact you or will it impact you at all or yeah i've been i don't i've been really thinking about that i've a part of me so i questioned if like celebrities got involved into the metaverse how would that impact the whole dynamic of it would you want to go visit a celebrity in virtual reality and maybe you might have more more leeway because it's virtual and not you know in real life will they charge you to go you know visit a celebrity's house in virtual reality will they charge you to go to a virtual concert a virtual club a virtual restaurant i really don't know but th these are things i have been thinking of and as for content creation i mean i believe content creation is here to stay because people People have the internet. They love to uh, watch content. They love to uh, just take in other people's experiences. And so I don't know how, I haven't thought about how content creation would look like inside a metaverse. Like, would you just live through somebody else's eyes? Is that their version of content creation? Would mm. you just follow somebody around in the metaverse? Um. It's it's really interesting. I haven't really given it much thought, but I, I think. Wait I a minute! You said live through somebody, so you would just follow some. So you would be at home. You mean following someone else around during their regular day? Is that kind of like the? Um, they call it on Twitch where people watch chill. What is it yeah, chill? Uh, they have just chatting. Just they chatting. Have, yeah. They also have in real life streamers that wear cameras and people. Will literally watch them walk around a city or go to the grocery store. Like these are things that already exist where people just want to watch you. Wow. So that being translated into the metaverse, where you might just be able to, you know, turn on somebody else's view if they allowed it. I feel like that would be a thing that is very possible, very probable in my opinion. Wow. And you brought up a good point about celebrities. So in the sandbox, Snoop Dogg has his own uh, villa. And you yeah, can, you, yeah, you buy the tickets and uh, you get access to parties and, and things where he'll be in there, not fit like physically, virtually, mm -hmm. you know, his avatar, he'll be in there talking and the other people who paid for the, uh, paid for the tickets, I think they're around $4,000, $5,000 to have this access. Yeah, I mean, that's an example of what I can already see for the future. Like, in real life, you obviously can't just walk into Snoop Dogg's house, but online, anything is possible. You could literally hang out with your favorite celebrity for the entire day if you wanted to. And I just think, you know, the possibilities are endless on that front. Now, I don't know how they would go about, you know, controlling it. They'd probably be very expensive to do those kinds of experiences, but people would be willing to pay. 
I've seen what people are willing to pay in real life. So in the metaverse, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if they would pay to, you know, stay in the celebrity's house if they can. Wow. So you're saying as a content creator, you, you see potentially yourself or another streamers, I'm sorry, this is a streamer, charging these NFT tickets or think to, for people to come in to, to get access. So kind of a, a paywall type of thing. Uh, yeah, I would. I mean, even I've been to a recent uh, anime gaming convention and that's just an experience where people pay tickets to see their favorite streamers, YouTubers, and other content creators, whether it's music or animation. That's people paying money to go just be in the same space as them. So in a platform where, you know, there are really any physical interaction, but there is the personal interaction, I believe people would definitely, they would definitely do that. Wow, that's good. This is good. This is good. All right, Matt. I think I think we 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 we've got some good stuff here, and I think I think we're, when we're at the top, it's good to kind of kind of end it when we're at the at the peak. Okay. Is there anything, any last things, or or really what I think would be uh, beneficial? What would your words of wisdom be to someone who's looking to become a streamer or or a content creator what would you say would be the thing uh if they were getting started today okay uh it's a very popular question i've had to answer it many times <laughs> on my screen. but if i'm being realistic the first and foremost thing is to offer value to your audience whether it's through entertainment whether it's through education um whether it's through you know asmr channels are big for a reason because it gives them it gives the audience pleasure and that's value so offer value don't just be a rinse and repeat of something that's already out there because why would they go to you so if your quality is not as good as somebody who's big if your content's not as good then there's no reason somebody's going to watch you and so if you have your content you know planned out if you have your value that you know that you're going to be able to provide then the hard part is to keep going, keep putting yourself out there. And don't just don't just talk to a wall the whole time. Do your research. Know where the people are and know where they're not going to be. I suggest people who want to start streaming on Twitch to have another funnel to move people to their Twitch because Twitch is not going to help you put yourself in front of people. That's just not how the website's set up to this day. So do YouTube, do TikTok. Um, you know, talk to people in real life and then tell them, point them to your channel. That is, I'd say those are the two most valuable things is uh, find a way to find and discover and to move your audience to where you want them to be and provide actual content. That was awesome. And I think a, a gem that you, you, you uh, well, there, were, there was all gems, but I think the, the big one was tell people in real life that's 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 a big one, you know, because a lot of times you don't think about that. But, you know, having that interaction, we see people every day, talk to them. Hey, check me out online. That is huge. That that yeah. That is a, a, a big, one. big yeah. one. You run into a lot of people in your day to day life. And surprisingly enough, uh, for Twitch, for Twitch's, uh, you know, verification program, you only need about 75 average viewers. And so I'm sure you can run into more than 75 people in a week. If you told one or two of them, maybe a day that, hey, I stream here, there is no missed opportunity to get some new followers. It might be a little intimidating, but you're going to be a content creator. You're going to have to learn how to talk to people, whether it's, you know, recording yourself. Eventually, if you want to be big, you're going to have to talk to people in real life. So right. sooner you can get over that hurdle is the better. That, that is good. That is awesome. Well, well, Matt, thank you so much. This this has really been great. You know, um, uh, you, I really appreciate you coming. Come and oh, so it, yeah, you got to give your uh, what 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 where can where can uh, they reach you? Okay, uh, so my username is Matt Hadouken. You can find me on Twitch 
You can find me on YouTube. You can find me on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. All spelled the same way, M-A-T-T-H-A-D-O-U-K-E-N, Matt Hadouken. But awesome. yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. I, it'd be glad. I'd be so glad if I could come back. Uh, this is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, thank you for everyone for watching. This has been amazing. Love to hear your, your feedback in the comments as well. Yes. Thank you.